rescue of the CDBG funded emergency tenant assistance program, as well as the small business relief program and how to apply for these programs. If you're joining by Zoom again right now, please type any questions into our chat, the Q&A box, or if you're on Facebook, we are running live, as I mentioned, so please type your question in the comments of the live video. The town has been responding to local issues related to the pandemic, and we're continuing to respond while also moving forward towards a recovery. Arlington receives an annual allocation of community development block grant funds from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, known as HUD. This year, in response to the pandemic, Congress passed the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, known as the CARES Act. And as part of that act, CDBG entitlement communities, like Arlington, were awarded an additional allocation of funding, which is called CDBG CV. Arlington was actually awarded, in addition to our regular million dollar grant, an additional $659,000, which is being used in response to the coronavirus pandemic. And those funds, as I mentioned, Erin is going to talk about how they're going to be used. So with that, what I would like to do is turn it over to Erin, who is going to be speaking about these two funds. She's also going to be sharing a screen and running through a presentation. After Erin speaks, Colleen will be talking about the COVID-19 relief fund. And then I'm going to moderate a quick dialogue with the two of them and open it up for questions. So um, if you're not speaking, we're going to turn off our video and listen to Erin. Thank you so much. Hi, good afternoon. Um, like Jenny had mentioned, I'm Erin Zorko. I'm the interim uh, community development program manager. And today I'm going to talk about two uh, funds that are two programs that we have created through our additional allocation of CDBG CV uh, grant funds uh, through the federal government via the CARES Act. Um, the two programs are the Emergency Tenant Assistance Program, which is geared to renters in Arlington that are having difficulty paying their rent due to COVID-19. The second program is the Small Business Relief Program, which is designed to support uh, businesses with five or fewer employees um, sustain operations through the uh, pandemic. Oops. Um, so again, here's the two CDBG funded programs. So the Emergency Tenant Assistance Program um, is designed to provide rental assistance of up to $2,000 a month for three months. Three months is the maximum that we are allowed to provide assistance for due, uh, based on uh, federal requirements. Um, the program is op open to any income eligible renter in Arlington that has been impacted by COVID-19. And to be uh, further eligible, you have to show a documented gap in your income due to COVID-19. I'll also note that the payment goes directly to the landlord um, as required by the federal government. And uh, the next slide I'm going to put up is a, a graph that shows the income eligibility. Oops, not it, not quite. <laughs> so, to to be eligible, you have to be an Arlington resident who rents your home. Your household must make a low income, which is 50% of the area median income. And again, you must be unable to pay your rent due to the COVID-19 pandemic and economic crisis. So here's the rental, uh, the income eligibility for a household of one person, that's $41,500. And the screen shows for a household of two, three, four, and five. Um, if your household is greater than um, the numbers here, you can find that information on the COVID-19 assistance website, um, which I believe is on the lower third of the screen. Um, so again, to be eligible for this program based on your household size, you cannot make more than the uh, income limits that are shown in this graph. For the small business relief side, um, the, this program is open to brick and mortar businesses that meet the HUD eligibility guidelines. Um, and we will be providing grants of up to $10,000 tied to your COVID-19 losses. There's a number of eligibility requirements for this program. Um, you have to be in operation for more than one year. 
you do have to have a physical brick and mortar location in Arlington, as well as a presence in Arlington. Five or fewer full-time employees is the requirement, and that includes the owner. Um, it can be uh, a mix of part-time employees to equal five full-time equivalents. Um, the owner must be a low to moderate income earner. There must be documented loss of business income caused by COVID-19 since March 1st. Your business cannot have any tax liens, unpaid town fines, or unresolved issues with the town. Um, and you will not have received SBA, which is the Small Business Administration assistance since March 1st as well. So the income eligibility for this program, again, this is only for the owner of the small business, um, is a little bit higher. It's at 80% of the area median income. So again, in this chart, you can see that for a single person household, the income limit is 62,450. And that goes all the way up to a five person household of 96,350. And if your household is larger than five people, you can find those income eligibility requirements on the town's assistance website. So this slide um, shows the application process and the timeline. Um, the two programs that I've spoken about, the Arlington Emergency Tenant Assistance Program and the Small Business Relief Program are following the generally the same timeline. So applications, the pre-applications opened on Monday, June 15th. Um, those uh, applications are accessible through the town's website. And that website is, again, on the lower half of the screen. It's arlingtonma.gov backslash COVID-19 assistance. Today, we're hosting the virtual town hall on um, the COVID-19 assistance. On Monday, June 29th at 11.59 p.m., that is the deadline to submit your pre-application. Uh, for both programs to establish the order in which we will fund applicants, we will be holding a lottery. So once you submit your application, town staff will pre-screen your application and assign you a number. We will then host a lottery on July 6th for the emergency tenant program and on July 7th for the small business assistance program. That lottery will be held live um, through Zoom as has been the town's practice. Um, so you can watch the, uh, the results in real time. Following the uh, uh, lotteries, we will um, be in touch with each applicant to, um, give, uh, to let them know where they fall in the lottery. For the emergency tenant assistance program, um, following the lottery, you will work with our um, housing provider, which is MCO Housing Services, to submit the required documentation and backup to prove your income eligibility and other eligibility requirements. For the Small Business Assistance Program, you will work with the town staff, primarily myself and Ali Carter, the Economic Development Coordinator, to submit uh, documentation and backup to uh, prove your eligibility. Once you have been approved for funding, either on the tenant assistance side or on the small business relief side, over the summer, the town will distribute the funds. Again, for the emergency tenant assistance program, that funding goes directly to your landlord. For the small business assistance program, it is a reimbursable grant. Um, so you will need to incur the expenses first and we will reimburse you for those up to $10,000. And that is um, the overview of these two programs. You can see the website on the screen. And I will note that we have translated information available um, in Spanish, French, Japanese, and Chinese, as well as on-call services for translation and other languages that are not provided uh, in writing. Um, and we will be um, making reasonable accommodations for those that need further assistance. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen and turn it over to Colleen. Ah, I see, I was, I was muted. Thank you, Erin. Um, my name is Colleen Legere and I'm the director of the Arlington Youth Counseling Center. And I've been working with the Arlington Health and Human Services Charitable Corporation and working in partnership with the town 
to establish the Arlington COVID-19 Relief Fund. Um, this fund has received um, donations from local businesses and um, community members of Arlington and has raised roughly $115,000 to provide financial assistance to those who have been um, who have experienced economic hardship as a result of the pandemic. Um, for those who are eligible, it is not restricted to households um, that earn a low income. However, priority will be given to those who have been most economically vulnerable um, to the COVID-19 crisis. Um, so the fund will provide assistance by paying bills directly um, for residents and workers for the town of Arlington or workers for businesses in Arlington. Um, and some of the expenses that it will cover would include um, rent and mortgage payments, condo fees, taxes, um, health care costs that have been incurred during the pandemic, um, child care costs that have been incurred during the pandemic, utilities. Um, for families with school-aged children, it will cover internet connectivity, um, as well as medication costs and um, other necessities. And again, we will pay those bills directly. Um, we will be reviewing applications on a rolling basis. And while we may not be, honor, be able to honor the full amount of all requests, we're hoping that for we will be able to cover some um, for all eligible, eligible applicants. Um, and again, until that fund is depleted. Um, I think, I think that's it. And if I've missed anything important, I believe Jenny will be moderating a question and answer session. So I'll be happy to answer questions at that point. And I'll turn it over to Jenny. Thank you. Yes, great. Thank you, Colleen. Stay on. And Aaron, why don't you, the two of you, come on back and Allie. Um, so I have a few questions actually just to follow up. Thank you so much for both of your presentations. Um, very helpful to get a sense of just the, sort of the scope of what you're looking for. And I know that there's already a question about an application, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, I am curious, though, if you can just speak to a little bit about the turnaround that you're anticipating for approving applications, um, both, you know, Aaron talking about that. I know that there's the two different programs, and then, of, of course, Colleen. So maybe Aaron go first, please. Yep, of course. Um, so as I had mentioned in my presentation um, for the emergency tenant assistance program, uh, following the lottery, you will be contacted by our um, housing provider, which is MCO Housing Services to um, submit the required additional documentation to um, prove your eligibility. At that point, um, once MCO Housing Services approves your application and refers it back to the town, we will um, cut a check for the uh, payment to your landlord. Um, we anticipate being able to turn this around within 30 days. And if there are uh, difficulties um, or your landlord needs assurances, we can execute a promissory note so that um, the landlord can be assured that he, he or she will receive um, the rent payment um, within a reasonable amount of time. Um, as part of the submittal of required documents, we will need your landlord's W9, uh, w -9 um, to be able to process the, um, the payment. For the Small Business Assistance Program, as I had mentioned, it is a reimbursable grant program. It does not require repayment, but you do need to incur the expenses first. And, at, and once you do, um, you can submit the documentation to the town for um, repayment. Um, so that is uh, as quick as um, you can be to incur those expenses and get them over to us um, for approval. Um, so I think that answers the question, Jenny. Thanks, Aaron. Colleen? Sure. Um, well, as I mentioned, for the COVID-19 Relief Fund, we will be reviewing applications on a, on a rolling basis and anticipate um, with the Grant Review Committee meeting um, a couple times a month to be able to respond um, to applicants um, just regarding whether the amount that they've been awarded within 10 business days and then working with them and the town to process payment um, as quickly as possible. And I would imagine within 
within about 30 days. Okay, excellent. And do, do you see possibilities for overlap in terms of if people are in a real crisis, a real emergency and can't wait, is there one, um, one way to go versus the other in terms of access to funding that you can um, provide some uh, guidance on? Can, I'll, I'll step in for a moment. We, we are in, um, encouraging residents who are applying for rental assistance who are eligible through the um, tenant assistant program to first apply for the lottery. Mm -hmm. um, and then if they are, they are approved for funding through the tenant assistance program, we would have them go in that direction. If they are, if they are not eligible, then we would welcome them to apply to COVID-19 relief fund, or if they are not selected through the lottery, then to come to the COVID-19 relief fund. And would that be similar for the business community? or is there a, a different process? Yes, and for, it would be for business owners. So, cause also we're offering it to workers of local businesses, but for business owners, um, we would encourage that they first go to, to your program. Okay, excellent. Um, and just uh, one other uh, question that I had is, you know, we're, this is really a public health crisis, of course, um, but, you know, and as a pandemic, we're seeing a lot of things unfolding. They continue to unfold in the community. Can you discuss really just how this money is really helpful at this time? What kinds of things are you hearing or seeing that speak to why this is so necessary? And, and of course, why the relief fund will continue to need additional support? Sure. Um, I think what we're seeing is that the the impact, both the, the health implications as well as the ec economic implications, is really having a disproportionate um, impact on um, low-income communities. So for those who may have been struggling to meet their basic needs initially, it has been exacerbated by, by this pandemic. So we are seeing increased need for those who may have lost their jobs or been, been unable to work because they have small children or who have so who have lost income or who have accrued expenses during this time that they're unable to, to cover, that we are seeing that need. Um, we have had people reach in for assistance and, and asking when this, these funds would be made available. Um, so certainly we, we're seeing it now in, in the immediate sort of need is right now. And we anticipate that it will probably be ongoing, that there, there it will sort of be longer term. And we're hoping that we'll be able to fundraise um, for the COVID-19 relief fund to provide some ongoing relief to those to those community members. Great, and, Aaron, do you wanna? Go yeah, ahead. I, I'll also note that um, in my position in, in the Department of Planning and Community Development, I have heard um, a lot of the same things that Colleen has just mentioned. Um, and, I'm, and I know Ali has as well from the business side as our economic development coordinator. Um, I will note that uh, while it's not the focus of this presentation, we are also making funding available to public service agencies that are um, working with all, um, all of the Arlington community and beyond um, to address the needs of um, residents uh, in this pandemic, whether it's for transportation, senior support, technology support, um, food security, um, any, any of those and more. Um, we are looking to also fund um, public service agencies um, and give them a, a small grant, again, uh, uh, doesn't require repayment, to uh, help them uh, operationally continue their services above and beyond what they normally do for our community as they respond to the pandemic. Great. And I'll just see if, Ali, you want to add anything, what you're seeing? Sure. Sure. Um, over the course of the last several months, we've done consumer surveys. We've done two surveys for business owners. Um, our Arlington Economic Development Recovery Task Force has convened several times. And we've also had um, um, focus groups with six of the largest industries in town. And uh, um, what we're hearing from the employers when they're talking about themselves, their own businesses, and on behalf of their employees, is that um, they're all kind of working twice as hard to make half as much. And I think that might resonate with a, a lot of folks who are listening in today. Um, 
and also um, just that the the uncertainty of this is uh, so difficult for people to cope with in terms of how much um, it costs to run their business and what customers' expectations are, and they want to do the best they can to meet those needs. So, um, yeah, the 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 uncertainty of everything um, is really difficult. And I think these funds can help um, business owners, you know, rise to the occasion and meet the needs of their, their staff, their own families and their businesses and the people that they serve. I know, I know you've all have put a lot of work into the programs and the program development um, and, you know, putting together the forms and the paperwork and uh, updating websites, trying to make it as accessible as possible for everybody who's looking for help right now. Um, there is, I hope, um, you know, a link on the screen uh, that people can go to to learn more about these funds. Um, we do have one question about uh, from uh, somebody who's participating, who's asking, um, and I believe that this is really for both Aaron and Colleen, for income eligibility, what kinds of documents do you need to provide? Erin, um, could you speak to that a little bit, please? Sure. Um, so I'll start by saying that the pre-application form, which is linked through the town's website um, for both the tenant assistance program and the small business assistance program is, is very simple and does not require backup documentation to be submitted at this time. However, it is a good idea to um, gather up the information that we will need um, so to document your income, the best um, course of action is to provide us with your tax return from 2019. That is going to show um, us what your annual income is. Um, due to the fact that so many of um, our community members uh, may have um, been impacted uh, in their jobs um, due to the pandemic um, and your income might be fluctuating right now. Um, it would be important to also provide um, pay stubs from the last couple of pay periods that you have been employed. Um, additionally, if you are receiving unemployment assistance at this time, uh, documentation of that, uh, of that assistance should also be provided. Um, on the uh, small business side, um, because we are only looking for the income um, of the business owner and that person's household, um, you do not need to collect all this information for your employees, just for yourself as a business owner. Um, and again, uh, this, this documentation isn't needed at this very moment, because I know it can take a lot to gather up this information. So um, following the lottery, um, depending on the order in which we will fund applicants, um, you will be um, contacted by our housing provider or from staff in the Department of Planning and Community Development and asked to submit this information. Um, so we hope that that streamlines um, the need to upload information into um, the SurveyMonkey uh, link that is our pre-application forms. And similar to Erin, um, the documentation is, is pretty much what we would uh, request as well. What we're asking is for um, residents or workers to demonstrate a change of income or an increase in expenses. So that change of income could look, could include um, last year's tax returns and current pay stubs. And then increase in expenses would be just the the receipts or invoices or statements that um, that they're requesting payment on. And I had another thought and I lost it. Oh, in terms of uh, needing those documents, um, again, we encourage residents and workers to apply. And if they need time to gather that information or if they need assistance in, in gathering that information, we do have social workers that are available. We have a case manager who is available to work with um, community members um, to through the application and, and beyond if, if they need case management supports beyond this financial assistance that's provided through COVID-19 relief fund, um, they are available um, to offer support. Thank you both. And um, in, so that, that's helpful, Colleen, to know who to call and what to do if you need help. 
and in and Aaron, you want to and or Ali speak to just providing any extra guidance uh, in relationship to filling out forms or applications. Sure. If um, if you are having difficulty filling out the pre-application form, um, you can get in touch with me. Um, my uh, email address and phone number are available on the town's website. Um, you can also call the department directly, um, which is 781-316-3090 um, to, be, to be put in touch with me. Um, and I can assist you in filling out either the tenant assistance application or the small business assistance application. I will note that the application form is mobile and tablet friendly. So even if you do not have a computer, you should be able to um, easily fill out the application. If you do need a printed application, we can coordinate that as well. And I just ask that you get in touch with me as soon as possible so that we receive it back as soon as possible. Great. Um, uh, the next question is, I think, also for you, Erin, which is, uh, if the business has three partners, if two of three partners are qualified as or el income eligible for low or moderate income and one is not, would this mean that they're disqualified for the assistance or would it still be uh, potentially eligible? I think it potentially could be eligible. I think we would need to... Um review this case um, individually if you apply and are selected in the um, lottery there could be a way that we are able to fund this um, application uh, but it might require providing a bit more documentation about the partnership structure great and i would say that uh, you know similar to the last uh, piece that we were just talking about if you have direct questions or you have a concern or you're not sure about something contacting Erin uh, directly or the, the main number for the Planning and Community Development Office and Colleen. Um, all of this is available through the arlingtonma.gov slash COVID-19 assistance site. So you can find answers directly there or um, type in uh, the email address that's at the bottom of that screen and ask your question. Um, I don't have any other questions coming up now. Is there anything else that the three of you would like to make sure that we um, communicate to the public about these programs and the opportunities that are coming up? Uh, I will note that it is um, through the, a grant from the Community Preservation Act Committee. Um, we, through the Department of Planning and Community Development, will be able to uh, fund a second round of tenant assistance with the same eligibility requirements. So uh, once that money, uh, that funding becomes available, um, we will be releasing a second round, um, most likely in mid-July. So if you're not selected in this round, there's another opportunity. And secondly, I'll, I'll also note that um, the Housing Corporation of Arlington's um, Homelessness Prevention Program is another um, uh, resource for people um, to look to um, with uh, uh, um, that can help provide um, assistance for rent, but also many other um, household expenses that not, that my the Arlington Emergency Tenant Assistance Program cannot support due to the federal requirements. Ali. I just wanted to make a note, um, and I'm afraid Erin's going to have to answer this because <laughs> she knows it um, much more better, much better than I do. But um, these documents are available in uh, a number of different languages, correct, Erin? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, we made um, our guide and frequently asked questions, as well as uh, um, the pre-application form um, uh, available in. Spanish, French, Japanese, and Chinese. Um, while you will have to fill in the pre-application form um, on an English-facing page, um, you can follow along using the translated documents. If, if you would feel more comfortable receiving help um, uh, through um, an interpretation in a language that uh, we did not um, provide a written translation in, I can secure those services. So please let me know again as soon as possible so that I can um, facilitate that with you. Um, we have access to interpreters in the region that can provide us with assistance at this um, crucial point in time.
Great. Um, two, two more questions. Uh, as for loss of business income, what types of documents would we specifically be looking at? For example, documents for revenues or net income after expenses, uh, profit and loss. Can you describe what uh, types of documents might be necessary? And are those documents noted also on the, on the COVID-19 assistance page? Yes, um, so they are, and they also, in the frequently asked questions for the Small Business Assistance Program, um, I provide a calculation on how to document your loss of income um, before March 1st, 2020 and after March 1st, 2020. Um, so at this point, um, because so many different businesses um, keep track of their profits and losses um, and expenses in a variety of different ways, we will work with the um, individual business owner to provide the best information that um, gives us the best picture for the loss of income. Um, but essentially your general ledger is going to be the best um, resource for us at this time. Great, is there anything Colleen you wanted to add to that about? I was just going to say similarly, although we don't have that information on our site and we can add that to our site. We will add that information. That would be excellent. Um, if you apply for either the PPP or EIDL program, which are loans through the and uh, programs through the Small uh, Business Administration as a small business, does this disqualify you from applying to this particular or either one of these programs? Uh, I, I'll mention that um, because uh, uh, the Small Business Assistance Program is um, federal funding, um, we are unable to um, duplicate the benefits. So as part of the application for the Small Business Assistance Program, you will have to certify that um, you are not seeking assistance for the same thing that federal funding has already paid for. Um, because that is a duplication of benefits and um, is is um, ineligible for uh, uh, CDBG funding, which is the funding source. Um, so that is um, something that is important for you to track and provide us with the uh, uh, accurate information at the time that we work with you to fund your application. Erin, I just want to add a point of clarification um, because you the the PPP program is still accepting applications for a small period of time, so it's okay to apply for PPP um, or an SBA funded program. But if you receive that funding um, simply by applying, that doesn't disqualify you. That's correct, correct Allie. Yeah, it's simply. Fun. Yeah, applying for any of the programs that are out there right now to support small businesses does not disqualify you from the Small Business Assistance Program. We just need to um, be uh, aware if you do receive funding um, in the future to ensure that we're not duplicating the benefit. And that's the Payroll Protection Program and the e Economic Impact Disaster Loan program okay <laughs> in yeah. case in case Sorry people are wondering that. what those two things were um they are those are programs that were offered or are still being offered through the sba the small business administration and i believe uh, a number of local banks are at local lending institutions serve as places where you can apply uh if you are currently uh banking with that institution correct yes okay Actually, many of them are allowing even not current clients to apply. It wasn't that way at first, but now it is. Excellent. Um, okay, well, I don't have other questions, but I'm just uh, looking ahead. Do you foresee, you know, um, Colleen, I know you're still, of course, raising funds through the Relief Fund, and we've had such amazing generosity in the community coming forward and filling that fund, but do you foresee additional fundraising initiatives or other grant opportunities? And similarly, Erin, you mentioned the CPA money, which will the Community Preservation Act money, which will be added to um, the uh, amount that we have available for the tenant assistance program, but do you foresee any additional opportunities in Alley as well? Um, anything that you can 
explain to people listening about future opportunities um, that might be coming in the future to help with uh, the current situation as well as what we see in the uh, coming ahead? I guess I'll go first. Um, so yes, as I had mentioned, the um, CPA committee has provided um, the department with additional funding to supplement um, and just further the goal of the um, tenant assistance program for the small business assistance program. It is likely that after the um, after uh, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Um, uh, approves an action plan um, that we are in the process of working on. There will be additional funding for small business assistance. Um, however, uh, that is probably on a little bit of a later timeline than the CPA funding, probably closer to the end of the summer. Um, however, that that is something that we are looking forward to as well. Um, with regard to other funding sources specific to COVID-19. Um, I'm not aware of any from our department, but as I mentioned before, sort of in response to the need that we see, we will continue to fundraise um, to be able to provide some of that, some financial assistance to the community sort of moving forward. Although I will say that from this grant, from this COVID-19 relief fund, it's a one-time grant. Um, and you know, we'll sort of assess over time if if the need is, is greater than that, whether to reconsider. But at this point, it is a one-time grant from that fund. Um, and I will add that um, I am always on the lookout for more opportunities from any corner, all corners, um, for more business assistance. Um, I uh, maintain a... Um, COVID-19 business and nonprofit resource page um, that is on the town's website. And I um, shared a link in the chat with everyone. Um, check back to that page um, frequently um, for any and all updates related to COVID-19 and business, and it will be there. And those, those resources that you just referenced, Ali, are, I think you can launch from the COVID-19 page on the town's arlingtonma.gov page directly to the economic development resources, which provides a very comprehensive overview of, of a number of different things that we've talked about, as well as other opportunities uh, for people to apply to directly, and then other things that we're looking at uh, for the, you know, town-wide. Okay, well, I just want to thank each one of you for participating and for the people who ask questions. Much appreciated. I hope we've been able to um, respond to you today. If you have further questions, please feel free to get in touch with us directly or going through the COVID-19 uh, assistance side of the website. Um, thank you again, and I hope everybody has a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.